detained at Melbourne Airport for eight hours. Has been caught up in a legal battle in Australia. Has been deported after losing an appeal to stay in Australia and compete. The year is 2022, and despite the COVID-19 pandemic's havoc on society continuing into its third year of tireless existence, professional sports as we knew it have generally returned to some semblance of normalcy around the world, with one major hurdle, to mitigate the possibility of spreading disease in addition to remaining compliant with local health regulations, numerous sporting teams, leagues, and organizations have proactively experimented with the concept of mandatory vaccinations for their players, where in order for one to play and or avoid heavy sanctions, you had to get the jab. This process hasn't gone over too well. Confronted with continued virus variant surges, absent key players, and even fake vaccination cards, numerous teams have essentially waved the white flag easing health rules and inviting back unvaccinated players into the fold. While professional sporting entities overall continue to post far higher player vaccination rates compared to the general population, no single organization has yet proven bold enough to fully and firmly mandate inoculations as a prerequisite to play. That was until recently. In November 2021, Tennis Australia, in conjunction with Victorian state government policies, announced that for the following year's Australian Open, one of the four extremely important major tennis events, all attendees and players were required to be fully vaccinated, with very little exception. Now, while a logistical hurdle, no doubt, vaccination figures actually looked extremely promising leading up to the event, as the Association of Tennis Professionals, or ATP, reported that 97% of their top 100 players were vaccinated in the days leading up to play. The problem? One of those three players just happened to be tennis's number one ranked Novak Djokovic, this generation's most decorated player who undoubtedly commands massive influence over television viewership, ticket sales, and advertiser payouts. A player whose success might allow him to skirt regulations and play by his own rules. A player who, despite organizational and government rules, flew to Australia in early 2022 to capture his record 10th Australian Open title. While the events that quickly unfolded became international news viewed by many as a scandalous embarrassment for all parties involved, few actually understand the full story and actual reasoning behind Novak Djokovic's eventual deportation and potential future banishment from Australia. A political scandal that caught tennis in its crossfire, this case might prove to hold massive implications on Novak Djokovic's future career and the contentious legacy it leaves behind. Preface, while a runaway success on the tennis court, Novak Djokovic's career up to this point has not been without controversy, especially in these post-pandemic times. So if you'd like a refresher on any of that, including his 2020 Adria Tour fiasco, I highly recommend you watch my earlier video on the subject, link in the description. What you basically need to understand is that Djokovic has previously been vocally opposed to the concept of vaccination, and until recently refused to confirm or deny his COVID-19 vaccination status publicly, formally stating that, if the vaccine becomes compulsory, I will have to make a decision whether to do it or not. Though speculation regarding his unknown playing and vaccination status reached a fever pitch in the days leading up to the Australian Open, especially with the Victoria State Deputy Premier publicly announcing that medical exemptions for the vaccine policy would not be a loophole for privileged tennis players, Djokovic shocked the tennis community with a surprise announcement posted to his Instagram account, stating that he in fact was heading to Australia with a medical exemption. As was to be later revealed, Djokovic managed to receive a border travel permit by the state government of Victoria, where Melbourne is located and the Australian Open takes place, after a review of his application by two independent government health and tournament panels. But how? Though his particular exemption was not disclosed, the groups listed several possible reasons for exemptions, including a COVID-19 infection within the last six months, inflammatory cardiac illness, or acute medical conditions such as major surgery, which seemed odd as none of these appeared to apply to Djokovic, especially as he had at no point publicly quarantined within the prior months. Regardless, he had the exemption, he was on the tournament player list, and he was en route to Australia. What could go wrong? Obviously, everything. Almost immediately upon landing, despite the supposed proper assurances given by Victorian state government, Djokovic was stopped at airport immigration by border control officers, temporarily relieved of his passport and cell phone, and taken to a small room for questioning. An ordeal his traveling entourage claimed lasted over eight hours, with Djokovic's own father eventually threatening on social media. If they don't let him go in half an hour, we will gather on the street. This is a fight for everyone. So to recap, he was allowed into the country on a travel visa. What was the issue then? Well, here's where things get a bit complicated. 
The best we know is that Border Control initially made the determination that Novak Djokovic was attempting to enter the country on the wrong type of visa, which did not permit medical exemptions for being unvaccinated. To rectify the situation, Border Patrol contacted Victorian department officials, asking if they indeed formally backed and sponsored his entry into the country. Unbelievably, Victorian government officials responded by pulling back support for his visa, with Victorian Legislative Council member Jala Pulford publicly stating, We will not be providing Novak Djokovic with individual visa application support to participate in the 2022 Australian Open Grand Slam. Apparently, officials claimed what had happened was that not a human, but a computer reviewed his initial entry visa. The system relied on the applicants putting in what they believe were their conditions. Djokovic applied claiming a legitimate exemption, but upon human review at the airport, the exemption was deemed invalid. Regardless, lacking the support of local government, it was then up to Australia's federal government to decide Djokovic's fate, a decision announced soon after by Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Mr. Djokovic's visa has been cancelled. Rules are rules, especially when it comes to our borders. Of course, despite his now illegal status in the country, Djokovic, his team, and his worldwide coalition of fans refused to accept the decision at face value. After nights of intense protests outside Djokovic's attorney's office and detention center normally used to detain asylum seekers, in which police at one point resorted to pepper spraying the Serb supporters as a form of crowd control, Novak Djokovic successfully appealed and overturned his visa cancellation in federal court on a procedural ground, with Federal Circuit Court Judge Anthony Kelly conceding that the authorities' decision to proceed with interviewing Djokovic in the early morning and cancel his visa before he could contact Tennis Australia or his lawyers was unreasonable. Djokovic was apparently told at 5.20 a.m. on January 5th that he had until 8.30 a.m. to respond to a notice of intention to cancel his visa. Soon after, his final comments were then instead demanded at 6.14 a.m., with his visa canceled an hour later. Judge Kelly said if Djokovic had been given up until 8.30 a.m., he could have consulted others about the decision. Though a huge win for Djokovic on paper, with the tennis star posting pictures from the tournament's practice courts just hours later, delving into the semantics of the court hearing and judge's decision actually resulted in three major implications being brought to light. Firstly, despite the ruling, Immigration Minister Alex Hawke could still technically re-revoke Djokovic's visa if he saw fit in an exercise of personal power of cancellation, a ruling which would in theory supersede all others. Additionally, if Djokovic's visa was summarily removed upon an exercise of personal cancellation power, Australian law dictated he would be banned from the country for a minimum of three years, raising the stakes of Djokovic's appeal attempt by magnitudes. Finally, the court hearing, which was streamed live on the internet for all to see and hear, at long last revealed Djokovic's supposed medical exemption. He had tested positive for COVID in December, thus qualifying him for a rule exempting those from the vaccine who had been infected with COVID-19 within the previous six months. In fact, a sworn affidavit provided the exact date he tested positive, less than one month earlier, on December 16th. Now, remember what we mentioned earlier about Djokovic not previously announcing a self-imposed quarantine? If the tennis star had landed himself in hot water with Australian authorities by this point, his public image was now boiling over on the international stage. See, thanks to the power of social media and a later lengthy apology posted to Instagram by Djokovic, we now know that on December 14th, Djokovic attended a Serbian basketball game in which he was photographed hugging players, players that immediately after tested positive for COVID. Knowing this, Djokovic took a rapid antigen test on the 16th, but before getting his result back, attended a maskless event in Belgrade honoring youth tennis players, of which the tennis star claims he only received word of his positive test after attending. Whether or not he actually knew by this point is irrelevant, as Djokovic then knowingly took part in an interview and maskless photo shoot the day after testing positive. A decision he later recounted, on reflection, was an error of judgment, as he didn't want to let the journalist down. Coincidentally, journalists carefully combing through Djokovic's activities and whereabouts during that time period stumbled upon an additional piece of damning intel. Though Djokovic's initial entry visa refuted any claims of international travel in the 14 days leading up to his flight to Australia, publicly posted photos placed Djokovic in Spain just days before his flight. An additional embarrassment, Djokovic claims, was a human error and certainly not deliberate. My agent ticked the incorrect box about my previous travel before coming to Australia. 
With international media now capturing every new development, tennis fans worldwide holding their breath, and Australian Open officials announcing Djokovic's first round opponent despite an overwhelming 71% of Australian poll respondents arguing he should be deported, on January 14th, less than 48 hours to opening day, Immigration Minister Alex Hawke announced his final decision on the matter. Today, I exercised my power under Section 133C of the Migration Act to cancel the visa held by Mr. Novak Djokovic on health and good order grounds, on the basis that it was in the public interest to do so. In other words, as heard by various other statements over the preceding weeks by numerous Australian politicians, Hawke essentially argued that in addition to all past indiscretions, allowing Novak Djokovic to stay strengthened his intended or unintended ability to influence others to resist vaccination or defy public health orders. Though Djokovic filed one final appeal in a desperate bid to stay, the court simply found that the immigration minister was within his rights to cancel the tennis star's visa for the second time based on the aforementioned reasoning and ultimately upheld the original ruling. Out of time and out of appeals, Novak Djokovic soon after boarded his plane and left the country following his 10-day ordeal. Though his Australian odyssey may be over, the story itself is not, with ramifications from Novak's actions continuing to hold weight into the near and distant future, namely his banishment status. While now technically barred from re-entering Australia for a minimum of three years, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, upon Djokovic's deportation announcement, added, There is the opportunity for a person to return in the right circumstances, and that will be considered at the right time. Of course, the Australian Open is not the only major tennis tournament with an inoculation mandate in place, as Djokovic might now have to contend with French and American rules stipulating full vaccination prior to arrival, though, similar to virus mutations itself, Laws, rules, and regulations appear to be ever-changing in today's day and age. In the end, with what amounted to a government determined to make a symbol out of unvaccinated celebrity entitlement, while many remain divided either in favor of or against the merits and reasoning for Djokovic's deportation, most who watched the debacle dominate the news cycle for weeks undoubtedly contend that Australia's overall handling of the situation was confusing at best and downright embarrassing at worst. For Djokovic himself, while his legacy will undoubtedly live on portraying him as one of, if not the best ever tennis player to walk this earth, the growing stain dotting his otherwise flawless resume continues to rapidly cloud the divide between achievement and notoriety.